Hello, and welcome to Convince Catholicism, a place for all things Catholic. Today I have the Manual of Prayers, the third edition, and this is by the Midwest Theological Forum. They are responsible for such books as a Daily Roman Missal, which I will also review eventually, as well as the Handbook of Prayers, which I have reviewed. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, when I ordered this book, I thought it would be uh, smaller, a smaller dimension, uh, but it's still a very uh, usefully sized book. We can see the dimensions here. We can see that they are uh, just about four and a, we'll call that four and a half inches wide, just under seven inches tall, and then probably about a three quarters of an inch or so, actually just about an inch uh, wide, okay? So uh, we can see that this is a fairly uh, compact and portable book, and you know, this is a uh, for lack of a better term, a malleable book as well. Now, this is the third edition. This is when I ordered it from Amazon. This is what I got. If you decide to order this from my link in the description, this is what you'll get as well. I'm not sure what the first or second editions were like, um, but if anyone in the comments can tell me that, that's greatly appreciated. Uh, but this is very similar to the Handbook of Prayer. Um, except uh, for the fact that this is focused much more on devotional. Well, it's strange. It's focused much more on devotional, but has a much more robust morning and evening prayer. Uh, and because it's much more devotional uh, it and much more focused on morning and evening prayer, it has omitted the order of the Mass that is included in the... Um, uh, the the um, the handbook of prayer, the order of mass has been omitted. Now, interestingly enough, we can see here that the first edition is from before Vatican II, 1959, in fact. So, again, maybe um, we can see what that was like. And notice here, too, that it was made for the NAC, the North American College of Rome, which, at least its reputation is the best and brightest of the American seminarians will end up going here. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, table of contents. So we have here liturgical and paraliturgical prayers. And this is kind of the consolation, I guess you could say, of getting rid of the order of the mass. We have also, uh, let's move on here to uh, daily prayers. We see the morning uh, and evening prayers. We have prayers and devotions to God and the saints. And we also have uh, other prayers. And then we also uh, have the appendices and, and indexes. Okay, so... I would say that <clears throat> when it comes to the, let's go section by section, right? So I would say that when it comes to the liturgical and paraliturgical prayers, we have some of the prayers that we'll see in the Mass, but not exactly the ones that you would want. I would say you know, maybe if you wanted to see what the prefaces for the Holy Communion or the or the four rites of the Eucharistic prayer are, that would have been a great option. But the way I see this, and I see this as a positive, is if you are someone who's traveling, uh, this is a great prayer book for you. Uh, just because you take a vacation does not mean that you take a vacation from God is something I like to say, and I've, I've stolen that. I, I don't know who the first person to say that was, but we can see here, Signum Crucis, Kyrie, Gloria, Credo, uh, the Apostles' Creed, Sanctus, so, so on and so on, uh, so forth and so on, and it's in Latin, Italian, Spanish, and there are even some prayers 
uh, in French and in German in this, right? So let's take, so let's say for example, that you are out of town and you try and catch a match with, uh, try and catch a mass within the United States, but uh, this one is in Spanish. Or maybe you are in the Northeast of America. This one is in Italian. Well, at least you have a few of these prayers here that you would be able to participate somewhat in the mass. Latin, if you are, say, going to a Latin Novus Ordo, this would be great. Um, if you wanted to pray before the mass, after the mass, this would be great as well. Uh, so, And we'll be taking a look at these in a moment. Uh, another thing, too, <clears throat> are the sacrament of penance. And this actually has, like, the words or the dialogue of that. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So uh, let's go to... Uh, 55, for example, 55. So we, we see here, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been a specific period of time since my last confession. Uh, and then we see what the priest will say. And then the act of contrition. We have several options, the absolution, and then it's in different languages. We see, again, the French and the German prayers there, which is rather nice. Um, we also say, we also have what the priest has to say uh, with the Psalms. And then we have the morning prayers. So, and this is where this would be, like, the most useful. And notice that it's kind of... Uh, somewhat central in the book, right? The middle of the book wears the uh, least easily, right? So here we have this morning offering. Um, we have these prayers both in English and in Latin. It's always nice to see the language of the church being utilized. And then here may one may add here the acts of faith, hope, and love, which is really traditional. Um, I'm sure that was in the first edition. And then we have these daily intentions: Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on and so forth. Morning offerings, so on. And then the Tadeum, which is of course very traditional for um, the the morning prayer. And then this is very cool. We have something from the Byzantine liturgy uh, we, with the Troparion to the Holy Angels, which is typical for uh, a, a, a non-Sunday. And so I like the, and then we have the uh, Benedictus, right? And then so I like the customization of this. I like that you're able to... Um, really pick and choose what types of prayers that you would use. Um, especially when it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, because that keeps things refreshing. Uh, I don't like when devotional books have a order for morning prayer or whatever they may call it, and it's the exact same thing every single day. Some people may like that. Personally, I like to have the rotation. Um, we also see... Uh, the uh, prayers for the day, right? So we see um, we see the Veni Sancte Spiritus and so on. Let's take a look at the evening prayer. So the evening prayers. We have very much the same kind of deal here. We see the Magnificat. And then because it's evening, it's going to be much briefer, or much more brief, rather. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then a prayer before sleep, which is nice, because sometimes a devotional prayer book might have a night prayer or an evening prayer, but not both. I'm glad that they have kind of an, a sense of both. And then in order uh, to kind of uh, make more variety, we have the seven penitential psalms. And so I would imagine since it's seven, maybe you would pray uh, one psalm a day. You know, you could very easily uh, do such a thing if you wanted. Um, one thing I will say is that 
and the Psalms are in this paragraph format, I'm used to having them in a verse kind of a format, but that is such a negligible issue. I mean, who cares? And then, of course, we have here the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. That is perfect for uh, night prayer. I wish that there was a more streamlined version of a night prayer. I think it's very easy to use the pre-Vatican II night prayer as uh, something, and then you can change the Marian antiphon. But this book is really useful. I mean, we can see here that there are uh, different devotions, the Stations of the Cross, uh, this idea of uh, learning Christ and these different words from the saints as well. Uh, we see, Tom, well, and some of the uh, Christian figures, right? Because Thomas Akempis is not a saint. Uh, but we see here uh, various seasonal devotions. You could also use this for uh, night prayer. I mean, it's got so many different things in here. And then the various needs. You can think of anything to pray and it will pretty much be in this book. We also have novenas in honor of different saints. We open up to my patron saint here, St. Anthony of Padua, and you can pray these uh, novenas in a group or by yourself. And um, yeah, this book is quite the variety. I mean, I wish it had kind of an order of mass, at least the four rites of the Eucharist, and at least maybe um, uh, the preface of the Eucharist, in addition to these uh, liturgical and paraliturgical prayers. Uh, but I would have to say that, you know, if you go to Mass every Sunday and, and, and Holy Day of Obligation, you should be able to get used to that rhythm of the daily prayer. And um, I would say between this and the Handbook of Prayer, I prefer this one. Again, that, that rotation of prayer. Uh, curious to see what the first and second edition were like. But uh, other than that, that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Take care and God bless.